Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I want to introduce you to another one of my designs in stencils and masks. So in this video we're going to look at lazy layers. Lazy layers, this is a set of four geometrics. It says cut or full, and I'll explain that in a little while. Okay, lazy layers is going to be a series of stencils and masks that I create for those who are working on a budget or working on a smaller project. So what I've done is in the one stencil, I will give you four different designs that work with each other. And over time, you can build up those different selections. And they'll probably be about... Ooh, probably about three or four of these launched a year. So when you reckon with that, that gives you 20 stencils if you were to buy the five of them. So I will do it as, as I get four coherent designs that I think work well together at this scale. That's when we'll do it. So let's take a look at what it looks like. It will arrive like this. Now you can order it in the full sheet size which if some people want to work in full sheet, that's fine. Or you can ask for it to be cut down and it'll be cut down into four. I've left mine whole because I wanted to show you if you wanted to cut your own, how to cut it. So let's move that to one side, move that to one side. Let's pull in my guillotine. You don't need a guillotine for this. You can actually do this with the scissors, but what I would do is always measure it perfectly before you start. Now, I know this is nine inches, I've already measured this, so my central mark would obviously be four and a half. This is 12 inches, so my central mark will be six. So always make sure you double check. So I can see it's four and a half there. It's not going to cut it short. So I'm going to bring this over to the four and a half mark. Now, before I cut, I'm going to do a visual check just to make sure I'm not too close to the edges, because once you've cut, you've cut. So, and then I know this needs to be six. So again, I'm going to line this up, do a bit of a visual check, just make sure everything's squared, because once you've cut it, you've cut it. Now there's no sending it back going, oh, it was the wrong size, I cut it wrong. You have the option to order it to be cut in the first place. So again, put it into place, measure it up and cut it. Now, if you're someone who hasn't got a guillotine, um, you can always do this with um, a pair of scissors. What I would say, however, is in that instance, I would mark the UPO with a pencil mark, top and bottom, draw the lines and then cut them. So what you'll end up with then are the four individual designs, which are easier for storage. They're roughly the size of a postcard. Um, and I've kept them this size and scale because you could easily be using them on an ATC as well. And in this video, I'm hoping, saying hoping because there's a big ask on this one, what I want to show you is how versatile they are. So I pulled out a few things. I pulled out two background 12 by 12s that are not quite there yet. They need stuff. So we'll look about adding something to these using these that may help this elevate to another level. Remember, these are called lazy layers for a reason. They're layers. These are not, not the pieces that finish something off. These are the layers that are built up within something. I also pulled in some postcards, which basically for me, these were my Brayeroff sheets and I've cut them into the size of a postcard. And as you can see, if I put this on top, they're slightly larger than a postcard, a postcard that I use anyway. So you can cut them whatever size you like, but it gives you the option of using the whole design or part of the design as we're going to use as we go along. So we're going to look at some postcards. And then we're going to look at some ATCs or artist trading cards. Again, these are just backgrounds I've created that need more elements put on them. And then eventually they'd have a focal point. And I do have a lot of people out there asking me for ATC designs. This works perfectly on an ATC. So I've left areas of it where it is quite sparse in design so that you can utilize pieces like in this one, which is the bubbles one, you have a border or you have a whole design. In this one, I've stacked it so that you could choose to use maybe the top element of it, or you could use the whole thing of it. It depends how you want to utilize it. So in this video, I'm just going to play. We're not going to make any finished projects. We're just going to add different layers to it. I'm going to be working with acrylic paints in this. Um, I'm pretty much going to use my 5x7 gel plate purely as a palette because I'm going to be using sponges and acrylics to add the paints onto these. The sponge um, 
This is here because I can easily wipe this off and it doesn't cause me any problems. Um, I'm probably going to use um, a 12 by 12 gel plate when it comes to the larger pieces, purely because I can. But you can use the same technique with a sponge and a stencil on the bigger pieces as well as the small ones. So, a few things about um, the stencils. I designed for PM Artist Studio, which are based in Texas, USA. All of the products are cut and shipped from the uh, from America. It's the only place you can get them. PM Artist Studio does have an Etsy store as well. Um, they're made from 74 pound UPA, which is 100% poly polypropylene synthetic material. I like it. It's, as you can see, it's white. Sometimes when you have transparent stencils, I find them hard because first I'll put them down, I can't find them. Um, but I find them a little more flimsy. I like this. It's washable, it's wipeable, it's durable. I've not had any problems with it. Also, it's thick enough that if I want to put texture paste through it or any dimensional paste through it, I can also do that. I won't be using texture paste in, that, in this video, but I do use this to put texture paste onto some projects as well. Just know that if you're using anything like a texture paste, as soon as you've done them, just make sure you wipe your stencil off. Or the other thing is, if you like your stencils pristine and clean, I personally don't. I just use them and let them dry. Um, if it's got paint on it, you can just throw it into a bowl of warm water or just plain water and let it in there until you've got time to wash it. However, if you are using texture paste, crackle paste, dimensional paste, anything that's a paste, just wipe it over as soon as you've used it because once it's dried on here, it's going to dry on here and dry on there and stay. So let's get on and let's have a bit of a play. So I've got a pot here. This pot is full of bits of sponge. So this sponge came from a packaging thing that I ended up with. So I cut, cut it into little pieces. Very often I'll use baby sponges. I'll use car wash sponges. I'll use anything like that. Cut it into cubes like this. If I'm using a lot of them in one project, I'll have a bowl of water by the side. I'll use the sponge, throw it in there, give them a good squeeze, and then I can use them again. If I'm just using one or two, I could be, tend to be a little bit lazy and I will not I will not use them again. I'll just throw them straight in the trash because I get all of my stuff from like the pound store, the dollar store. They're really inexpensive, guys. Okay, right, what should we start with? Um, let's start with some 12 by 12s. Okay, I'm gonna go straight in with my 12 by 12 plate because then these this this can be finished with and out of the way then. So I'm going to choose one of these. I think I'm going to choose this one. So this is obviously lilacs and lavenders and stuff like that. I think I'm probably going to go in and use something like um, a plum colour or a burgundy or a purple just to pull this through to the forefront. So I'm going to use my brayer. I've got a four inch brayer here for this, although I could use the sponging technique as well. Right, am I in shot? I am in shot. So let's see. Right. Um, this is Purple Plum or Plum Purple by Arteza. I'm not likely to name all of the different colours and products I'm using, guys. I'm just going to use them. So looking at this, there's already dots on here and I've got dots on one of these as well. I could use those or I could go to squares. Um, I think I want to use dots and I may use that one as well. So let's put these two to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the design onto the plate and then pick it up with another colour. So I'm just going to, I'm always accused of starting in the top left hand corner and I don't know why I do, but I do. Actually I'm going to go all the way to the edge of here. Now I'm going to not, not use this section, the border. You can always cover this up with a spare piece of paper if you wish to mask it off so that it doesn't get contaminated. The method I'm doing, you can always clean up before you lay the next layer down anyway. So I'm just going to come in, brayer in some of these dots. I don't mind if they're not complete. I don't mind if they're only partial. I'm just putting in dots. As you can see, it's a really, really cute little design. Let's get some more of that on there. And then what I would do is I would probably leave this to dry. And then I could come in and pick it up with another colour. But today it's a really um, it's a really cold, wet day here in Wales. So I think I'm going to come straight in and pick it up without using something else to lift it on. And also this gives me the opportunity to show you how 
I clean up my plate as well. So right, put that to one side. I'm going to bring in, I've just got a damp cloth. Damp cloth just to clean off any bits on here that I don't particularly want. Doesn't take much. You could use a wet wipe. I tend not to use wet wipes. I like to use a damp cloth. These are just space cloths from my local inexpensive store. So I've got those. Let's pick up the piece. Let's pop it directly on top of here. And I'm going to lift my baron. This is a baron. It's a tool I use to press down with because I find that where I do so much printing, I find rubbing on the surface all the time tends to dry and crack out my hands. This, this isn't an essential piece of kit unless you're actually doing a lot of this sort of stuff. So just pressing that down on there. And then when I lift this off, it should lift all of that paint off. And see, it's just added another layer. Right, I'm going to put this to one side. I'm going to leave that down there because it's not going to do any harm down there. And I'm going to come in with this one now and add something else. Now, I can see in here there is blue, there is pink. I'm wondering what colour I want to add on to this. Having a little look over at my paint box at the moment. It's tricky finding the right colour blue though. That's not the right colour blue. I can't remember which blue I used in the first place or whether it's a purple. That actually might be okay. Bluebird. No, not liking that. Let's go back to... Let's pull in this colour, right? This is violet blue iridescent. So we know it's going to have a bit of something about it that's going to be interesting. And I'm probably going to use the whole length of this stencil. Ooh, a bit of paint goober on the top of there. Let's lift that off. So again, I'm just going to put that down on my plate. I've got far too much on that plate, but that's fine. I can use it on other stuff as well. So I'm just going to brayer it. Now this is, um, I believe, a semi-transparent paint. So I'm just going to come in, lay that on my piece and brayer down through that stencil. Now, when you're using a stencil and a brayer, you may find that you've got to push down a little bit harder to get the paint down into the stencil to give you sharp edges. Um, that's not just with the UPO stencils, that's with any stencils. It's just a general thing. And I think I want maybe just the edge there. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I'm selecting areas of this so that I don't have to use the entirety of um, the stencil. There you go. So I've just got pieces on there. I'm just going to lay that on my brayer off sheet which I've got over to my one side just so I don't have a huge build up on here. Now looking at this I've got one little bit there just come into a little bit of housekeeping on that take that away. I don't mind the dots are in the background I'd be really surprised if they came up again. So now when I'm looking I know that is that so I'm actually going to turn this and flip it so that I've got a different orientation for the pattern to be added this time going to come in and then this will be the last that we do on this print however know that it's only because it's not meant to be a finished print it's all about those lazy layers just giving us quick fixes to be able to get stuff onto a print so I'll lift this off now there you go see we've got stuff all around now I've got a patch here and I've got more paint there and I think I'm going to pick up actually I might pick that one up I'm going to pick that up as a ghost print so I'm going to come in just rub down gently with my hand and it'll pick up a little bit and just put it right in the middle I don't mind that that's just giving me a little bit of interest so see guys that's just how I've turned something that was quite mundane into the next level this would need more drama for me but it's on its way I'm just going to pull in maybe a couple of these, which are the brayer off sheets that I had, and I'm just going to pick up stuff on them, purely because I don't like to waste paint. I think I'm like a lot of us in that respect. So just putting these down, we'll just add layers and layers and layers. And if anyone watches my videos and is used to seeing me work, you'll see for me, a lot of the time it is all about the layers. 
So, see, it just gives me, a little, luckily enough, it was the same colour. Not intentional. See, it just gives me little bits in the background. There you go, and there you go. Well, that one came out really well. So, right, let's put that to one side. Now, let's have a little bit of a clean up here. I'm going to take the spare paint off here and to put it onto my brayer off sheet. Now, the brayer off sheet is only here to clean my brayer, and eventually, one day, I'm going to get round to making that brayer journal or brayer notebook that I keep talking about. But currently, I haven't done it. So, right. That's that. I'm going to leave this on here because it doesn't bother me at this moment in time. So, right, I'm going to put these two to one side just so they're out of my way. I'm going to look at the next one. Okay, this one. To me, this really needs amping up in some way. And I quite like the oranges within it. And I think I'm going to pull orange in on this one. And I think I'm probably going to use only this one, the honeycomb one, because there's a lot going on on here. We'll use the square geometric in a little while. So I'm going to come in with a real punchy mustard sort of colour. And then I'm probably going to do a second bout of the same stencil, but I'm going to then put in something that's a little more yellow on that again. So just going to come in, pop it on here, spray my paint a little bit out. Now this is not one of the iridescents, so I know that it's, it's going to go on quite well and it's going to be quite a matte finish when it's on. It's not going to have a sheen to it. Not that that was a problem, just know that that's not, I don't want a sheen here. I'm going to come in. Now what's going to happen is where this is overlaying the paint that's already on this plate, it's probably going to pick up some of that colour onto this print. But as there's already purple in this print, I'm not worried about that. Just add a little bit in there. Let's pull that to one side. Now I'm immediately going to come in and put this down because um, a brayed layer of paint is usually quite a thin layer. And that means it will dry quite quickly, dependent on the viscosity and the brand of paint you're using. Now don't forget guys, we can be using inks. We can be using watercolours, we can use anything we like. See, I like that, it's given it a layer in the background. Want to clear this off, because I now want to put on a yellow that's gonna have a lot more of a kick to it, something that's quite bright. Where's it gone? Right. So I'm just gonna use, this is sunflower yellow. I think the clue is in the name, really. Sunflower yellow. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add down other sections. Now I know where the sections are from the previous one. So I'm going to come in and add it in different areas on the plate. So this would be perfect if I was doing something like a bee journal or a bee theme scrapbook page or something along those lines. This would look lovely for... It's, I, I like hexagon, well, I like geometric shapes. I mean, I'm very much someone who's into the geometry of design. Let's put a little bit up there, because I think that needs it up there. And I think I'd like to add a little bit down here. I know I normally do patches of three, but guess what? We're doing patch of five today. Right, let's flip this over straight away. Pop this down. Give it a bit of a barren. This is a barren. This is um, a tool that actually just helps press paper down. You don't need it unless you're like me and I, I do gel printing probably every other day of the week. And by rubbing and rubbing and rubbing on paper, I do find that my hands get a little bit cracking occasionally. So I'm just going to clean up my stencil again just by brayering over the top of it onto a piece of paper just to clean it off. Now I've got some stuff left down on here. So what I'm going to do is go take some of those ATCs that pretty much are a very pale background, like that's a perfect subject. And I'm just going to pick up a layer of that paint on there because none of us like to waste paint, do we? There you go, see, it's just added another layer to that. And that one, oh, that really did add a layer to that, didn't it? That's a prime suspect for the next layering technique. So let's have a little bit of a clean up. I don't mind this sat here. It's only sitting there for a few minutes, just enabling me to have a bit of a clean up while I'm working. 
So I think I'm going to change out my... No, I won't, because I was going to say I was change out this brayer off sheet. I'm not sure. I think I'd like something more dramatic on there, which could eventuate when we do the next set of techniques. So let's just lift this off and see where we got to. There you go. That's really, really amped that up a bit. This would definitely now be a subject for some black or some really deep punchy purple just to bring it to the fore. But we've achieved what we wanted, which was another couple of layers onto a pretty boring background. Now, I've got stuff on here. If this wasn't a video, I would go in and I'd put another colour on top and pick it up. But as this is a video, I'm actually going to clean my plate off and we're going to move on. There you go. Now, that's us done with the 12 by 12 and it's done with the braid ring. So, let's take a look at how I can utilise some of these in another way now and do some detail work on postcards, um, which I think will be the next thing to do. So these are literally just pieces of brayer off sheets, like this, that have actually been cut down to postcard size for me. And what I would do with these is I would then, once they're finished, I would then back them because sometimes you'll find the backs will get dirty. I will then finish them with maybe a bit of let's say extra cardstock, maybe manila file folder, something along those lines. And that means that I'd have a nice clean back. So let's just have a look and see how I could work with some of these. Like this to me feels like it's calling for this. I like the way this design leads up there. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna put a bit of wax paper down just so that I don't get paint all over the place. Right, I'm going to take Let's take some Van Dyke Brown. We're going to jump around a lot between different colours, but this is Van Dyke Brown. I only need a small amount of this. If I get the lid open, I'd have a small amount of this. Just a little dob of it. It's very economical, this method, with paint. I'm going to pick up my sponge piece. And I'm going to lay this down where I think it needs to be. So I think it'll be about there. Now, the secret to sponging onto another surface is um, build up the paint, don't put too much paint on in the first place. Because if you put too much paint on in the first place, you're going to force the paint under the stencil. And nobody wants to do that. So just build up, just by dabbing up and down on the surface, it will just give you that nice sharp edges. You could do this technique on a small plate, a small gel plate. You could definitely do this on a 5x7. You could do it on an even smaller plate than that, should you choose. I just find this technique is just so handy because I just jump between projects. So if I lift this off now, there you go, I've got enough there. And I think I'd quite like to come along the top here and just add a little bit of a design element along that top edge to carry the design upwards. Just personal preference, just the way I want to work with this design. Of course, that's why we're all artists. We make unique decisions which create unique pieces of art. Now again, none of these are actually finished. What I would finish them with, how I would finish them with, I don't know yet. I, I would make that decision when I'd finished it. So to me, that's lovely. I think for me, if I was going to add something to that, it would probably be some sort of symbol or writing or maybe a bird flying across there. I don't know. I also think that possibly would need a bit more yellow because I think it needs a pop of something. But what that something is, I don't know. Now, I'm going to leave my sponge there because we never know. I may use black on something else. So where am I up to? Right. This one not wasn't black. It was Van, Van Dyke Brown, wasn't it? That's lovely. And I'm really liking this one. Now, you can use parts of or you can use the whole stencil. I quite like the idea of the whole stencil in this case, to be honest. Now, if you do want to hold it in place, you can always use a little bit of washi tape on the corners to hold the stencil down. I'm so used to holding it with my fingers, I don't have an issue with that. Now, looking at this, I've got to find a colour that works both with red and that colour up there, or I've got to have a colour that will blend through it all. I'm thinking, actually, I've got this Windsor Violet by Newton and Windsor and Newton, and I think that's going to work quite nicely. I'm going to put some Windsor and Newton per, uh, Windsor Purple down, and then I'm also going to put 
a little bit of white on the plate as well because I want to try and shade this slightly as I work. It won't be a true ombre, but it will be a slight shading. So I'm going to hold this down. I tend to put my fingers where the patches are that have got no holes in them. And first of all, I'm going to dab some of this onto a sponge and come in. Now, I'm purposely not giving a heavy coat on here for another reason other than just I don't want to force it under the stencil. What I want to do is I've got a second colour that's going to be introduced. Now, if I block out all of the apertures straight away with the dark colour, I'm not going to be able to come in with a lighter one. So I'm going to come in with the white now. I'm going to come over the top and this will blend the two colours together. It'll be more visible when you take you take the stencil off the project. That's one downside when you're stenciling. You don't actually know what you've got until you lifted it. And that goes for any sort of stencils, even the clear ones, because obviously your paint is going over the surface of the stencil anyway. So whether it's a clear or an opaque stencil, it doesn't overly matter. Right, I'm just going to hit certain areas with extra bits of white just to give me some variety of colour within this. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I've got a bit more white up there, is I'm going to come in, I missed what my finger was, and I'm going to pick up some of the darker colour, and then I'm just going to come round and hit patches. Just so I've got within the entire design, I've got patches of light and shade, and it will make it a lot more interesting to look at than just a flat colour. So I think we've seen me doing this enough. Let's take a look and see what I've created. There you go. See, I've taken that now from just a plain postcard to something that's ready to have a feature put on it. Or I like that as it is. I would just call that an arty postcard and it's finished. You could even use that as a journal card. You could cut it down into ATCs if you wanted. If you're a journal maker, you could cut that and make two tags long or two shorter stumpy tags. Let's put that to one side. That's another one that's in the offing. Now I have stuff on this plate, never wanting to waste stuff on the plate. So let's pull this one in and show you something different with this. Now you don't always have to do the whole thing. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do one half of this and I'm going to do exactly the same technique. But this time I'm just going to mix the paints to start with. I'm not planning to do the dark versus the light. I'm just picking up spare paint. I mean, you could put the lighter paint on the dark side and the darker paint on the light side. I'm just I'm just adding it in. Remember, guys, I've called these lazy layers because there you go. Just with a few seconds, all I've done is I've given this postcard a bit more character for another layer of something. Let's see if I've got one more that I can use something that's got a bit of oomph on it. I see purple in there. I want something that's going to actually actually why don't we just use the one on the top? I quite like that band down there. So I'm just going to bring in this one. Actually, why don't we bring on another one? Right. OK, we've got the bubbles down here and it's the border. So there is a division between that side and that side. I'm going to put that on there. And I'm going to come down. Now, this is predominantly going to be lilac or white this time because I'm using up the surplus paint on here. And very quickly, I will have added a layer of interest to the edge of my postcard. See, that's fun. I'm liking that. Do I put it across the bottom? No, I'm going to leave that as it is. We'll take a look at all of them at the end, guys, just to have a little quick look through. Right, I think we're done with everything that's on that plate. Um, don't know whether I can get any more off there. Um, let's just choose, choose this one and bring in this design and see whether I can actually, let's put it on there, actually get anything out of this sponge. You'd be surprised how far this amount of paint will go. Now, um, when I created this, I did not create these four designs to overlap each other. However, sometimes the design will tell you that that will work and it does work. So let's just lift that off. So see, I've just added to something. We'll use this one again in a second. So I'm going to put these two sponges to one side so I know where they are. 
time to clean up the plate. So I've got a different variety of paint coming in, a different color of paint. So, right, so if I'm looking at this, I would say, let's pull in, if that squares, okay, squares is wrong. Let's actually, let's use this one because this has sort of a trickle down effect. So if I sponge through here, it'll almost marry into there. And I think what I'm going to do is grab another sponge and I'm going to come in with a different sort of color. And I think I want to use, I'm going to use copper this time because copper is a really good color to use through stencils. It just gives you that punch of metallic and you're in control of it because of the stencil itself. Right, let's have a look where the positioning is. This is right. Okay, I'm just going to do the same technique again. So you see, guys, you can build up really quickly a design. And I've left enough space between the elements on one of these that you can pick and choose pieces. You don't always have to mask it off. I mean, I, I do, and I will use, like, scrap bits of paper. I'll use post-it or sticky notes. I'll even use washi tape occasionally to just mask off areas if I need to. But see, we've just added something else to this. It will need more. We know it needs more. I'm not worried about that. So let's do one more because I've got this color on the go and then we'll look at the ATC. So, oh, that's a perfect one. But right. that to me would work perfectly on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up because I don't want the design to go the whole way down. Let's just line it up. I'm kind of always lining one of the edges up, and that is because it means that the design will lay straight on, on the surface of the postcard or the ATC or the piece of art I'm doing, but it doesn't have to. Your choice. You are the artist. You make those decisions. Right. That looks like I'm going to have just enough paint for this. Again, I'm looking for a subtle background. Just something in the background. It's not meant to be the feature. Keep the sponge because I like the sponge. There, you see, it's just added. Hopefully, you can see that now. It's just added a little something. So I would probably put some lettering down there, something else, maybe even a I don't know. Um, put a tree, put put a background, just make anything. Maybe a spaceship. You could even do this as an outer world thing, or even a bumblebee. I'm, I'm not sure. Whatever, whatever takes your muse when you do it. So let's take a leap over. Let's put some of the postcards by. We may revisit those in a moment. Let's go over to the ATCs or artist trading cards. And these are the two we made earlier on, or you see me clean up with. So let's just pull in something else. So a um, bit of a cleanup needed. So I think you get the ideas, guys. Now, there are future layers from me. There's going to be things like splatters, there'll be coffee ring stains, there'll be um, like bark designs, there'll be netting designs. These are all, all products are in the making. So if you had a little folder to keep these in, believe me, you will add to them as we go on in time. Right, let's use this one because this one is, mm, to be subtle about it, there's nothing on it. It's boring at the moment. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to come in should I come down the side? I will come down the side. I think I'm going to come down the side with a punch of orange. Now, I'm going to line this up so that all of the circles on here, there won't be any half circles except that tiny little bit at the bottom. Let's bring in, let's bring in orange. So this is just a Deco Arts bright orange. Maybe we want to make one for Halloween. Maybe we want to make one that's got pumpkins in it. Who knows? I just like using colour. So well, actually I'm going to use the one that had the metallic copper on it because it's not going to transfer through this anyway. Come in, just do a little bit more of a punch of this. A little bit goes a really long way. It's an economical way to use it because I find a lot of the times when I'm working on my gel plate what I happen to do is I put far too much paint out and then I don't always have a way of picking it up. See, that's gorgeous. I'm going to do the same thing on here, actually. But I think what I want to do this time is I want to bring a border down that side that's a complete border. Let's make sure it's straight because 
Mimi OCD, it's, it, it works better for me visually if it's straight. Now, if you do like some of these designs, like um, this dot or circle or button version here, there is one in the works that's going to be um, a full, probably about 11 and a half by about eight and a half version of this coming out soon. I just need to finish off designing it, to be honest. The holdup is me and not PM Artist Studio, I can assure you. Right, this one is fine. Let's just have a little think of what's next. So let's have a little look in here. Right, well, that one's pretty boring. And this is what I'm doing, guys. So I'm just taking, that one might be cute. I'm just taking things that don't have a lot on them and adding something. You could say, you know, Kerry, I absolutely love that. It's finished. For me, I need something there. It's like this one is absolutely beautiful. I think that's gorgeous. I mean, whichever way up you want it, really. I mean, you could put, I know, New Year down there and send it out as a New Year thank you card. And those could be champagne bubbles. It's it's whatever your mind wants to make something. So let's put that to one side. Let's use this one. Right, where am I up to? I haven't used a square that often, and I like the square. Now, if I look at this, there are areas of this that have got smaller details into it. You don't always have to pick the bigger areas. So I think I'm just going to come in Maneuver that around so I've got a smallish area. I think that's nice because then that catches some of those on the way down. Let's come in. That's brown. Um, I think a white, a white would look nice with that. Let's put a little bit of white on there. Pull up another one of my sponges. Come in. So this is something that I would do basically. I would go through my backgrounds of artist trading cards, postcards, and um, things like that. And I would literally spend an hour and just add extra details onto things. See, that just adds an extra bit of something. And I like it so much, I'm gonna add it to this one. Now, I've gotta be careful because I've got diamonds and I've got squares and, I, and there's stripes. So I think we're gonna to jump to the stripe version here. Now, I think it'll work better that way. Yes, it will. Um, so yes, I would do it almost production line. And if you're a card maker, remember, these postcards could actually just be a card topper. Just something that then maybe you stamp something over the top of, or you fussy cut a focal point. So it's just a little element, just little somethings. So where am I up to? What have I got on the go? Right, let's just do two more of these. And then we'll, well actually that one because I don't like that one very much. There's something about it that just jars me. Um, I've got white on the go. Let's do it. Let's do two more of these, two more of the postcards, and then we'll take a look at what we've achieved in it'll be about half an hour tops that we've been working. So I like that one. I think I'm gonna bring in the honeycomb one again. Again, looking for areas of it that I like because I designed this with a huge variety of spaces and shapes that you can pull from. So I'm going to come in with the white and just pull up all the way down. Just using up that tiny little bit of paint. So a little bit about PM Artist Studio. PM Artist Studio are a family run business in Texas, USA, obviously, because as far as I know, that's where Texas is. Um, they manufacture and package and ship all of the designs directly from Texas internationally. Um, I would say if you're going to be buying stencils and you're international, what I would suggest is maybe buy a couple more than you would think you would need purely because then you can utilize the postage because obviously postage is a little bit more expensive if it's international. I believe if you're in the States, um, if you put an order in for over $30, I think you get free PMP. But obviously in this day and age, um, PM Artist Studio can't offer free PMP shipping internationally. It's just shipping is exorbitant all on its own. Right, let's leave that one to one side. Let's put this back, back down there. Just move these so they're out of my way. Right, let's pull in two more postcards, as I said, and we'll see what we've got. Right, that is bland, bland, bland. 
uh, to find something that just grips my imagination a bit. Actually, that one, because I've already used that one. Remember, oh, I used that one as well. And why don't we continue with the two that I was using? Right, let's put the spares out of the way. Right, let's see if I can just pull these into something that's going to give you a real punch. Right, this to me needs a real smack of something. Let's put that sponge out of the way. And I think I want to go with red. Now, have I got a transparent red? I've got a transparent red. So transparent red means everything underneath should show through. But you'll still see a bit of the red. And I like red. It's a nice colour for me. So what one will I do? Right, I've got the bars in there. I think I'd like to keep with the bars. And whereas I had the stencil that way on, I'm going to turn it this way on to take the red from the base upwards. So there are no fast rules in art as far as I'm concerned. There are a few guidelines that are helpful to you. But I think a lot of the art in the world that is most renowned has been created by people who have broken the rules and broken the barriers or pushed pushed a technique to discover a new technique. So I would say don't ever get hung up on am I doing it right? You're doing it right for yourself. Now there are things that obviously you don't go messing around with things like chemicals and resins and stuff like that for pouring and mix up the combinations because you never know what's going to happen. However, with paints and inks and stuff, I quite like that. I don't know why I'm sounding surprised. Right, I'm wondering whether... Do I want to do what I did before and put a little barrier at the top? No, because I might put something on there. Let's sit that to one side. So I've got some red left, obviously. Let's have a look what else did... Right, this one had red on it anyway, but I didn't really like that red, but I think I like this red better. So even though we've got pale bubbles in there, I'm going to put a few pale a red bubbles down this side to kind of not mask that the reddish there, but just take some of that design through to a different layer. And bang. There you go. Oh, I think I need something up there. Right. If I just put maybe two at the top just to carry the colour up. That will work better for me. OK, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Anything else that needs red? That might might like red. I thought I had another postcard somewhere. Where have I put it? Or have I just done it? Actually, let's do this one. Right. Let's go back to the blocks. As I said, I'm a lover of geometric shapes which is why pretty much this is the first one I did, I think. Or first, well, it's definitely the first of the lazy layers. Right. This will show up different colours because, of course, this is a transparent, although it's looking quite opaque to me on these colours, but it could be with the amount of colour I'm adding. I mean, obviously, if you add enough transparent paint over enough layers, it's probably going to turn opaque eventually. But this will give it something. Well, that's a very contemporary look. Um, let's do it along the edge of here. Let's see if I've got an area that I like. I think that's cute. Just that stream there. And that's why I like. It's not a repeating design on any of these stencils. It's literally random, random sizes within the same shape. So there you go, it turned almost brown on that colour because, of course, transparent red over the orange is going to make that brown. I think that's enough, guys. I think we've done what we aim to do. I wanted to show you what they were, how to use them. Now, if you want to clean your stencils, just drop them in a bath of a bath. Drop them in a bowl of warm water. I usually use warm water, probably because I just always have warm water. Um, you can use cold water. It works equally as well. Um, put a little dishwashing detergent into it, it'll also help. So those are the four designs. Let's move those to one side because I'm going to get them all stuck together otherwise. Let's move that out of the way. So as you can see, they were just brayer off sheets. These are now ready for a focal point in my mind. They look great. With, that looks like a landscape, doesn't it? So these would just get elevated to another level with a focal point put on them. But the whole point of this was we were just adding another layer of interest to the background. So those can all go to one side. 
Then when it came to the ATCs, I didn't do a lot of ATCs. Actually, that probably needs a little something. Let me just grab that sponge one more time. Where's, where's the hexagon one? I like the hexagon one. So I'm just going to take that little bit from there. Lined it up. Where have I put the sponge? I've got some red on there. Let's just a little bit of red in that corner. And add a little bit more of it in a different section across it. Now, these make really good business cards as well. Now, if you're not worried about the size of a standard business card, use an ATC and actually just write your name and details on the back and away you go. So, right, so that, that was one we just finished off. That's another layer of interest on there. All of these are just about putting interest onto a background. And then the last but no means least, put those to one side, we have our bigger pieces. So we had this one which ended up with lots and lots of lovely detail in there. Again, this isn't finished, this is just layers. And then we have this lovely one, which again isn't finished, it's just layers. But to be honest, this isn't very far off finishing. I'd probably come in with some white, put some white grid work on there, like lines, and then probably put one or two deeper colours. I might even go with a Prussian blue and put some maybe diamonds in there. Something maybe from my um, Hopeless Harlequin um, stencil, which I launched a little while ago. So, hopefully you like that, guys. Obviously messy fingers. But it was a quick and easy technique and a quick and easy way to show you how you can take things just one more level with just the simple designs that these are. So I've got all four all on the same sheet for you. And they're small enough to do several different things with. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. I'm Kerry the Crafter, and that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye, guys.